My name is Debbie Post Potter. My maiden name was Post and my married name is Potter, but I go by both. It's a farm. It's a farm. And I, it doesn't really have a name where we, where we live. The farms basically go by the name of the people who own them. So, you know, it's Potter Farms or it's Post Farms, that kind of thing. But it doesn't have an official name. Okay. My grandparents, as well as my husband's grandparents, were farmers, small farmers. But that was their livelihood. And I inherited uh, most of the land from my parents. And then when my husband's mother passed away this summer, he inherited 80 acres from her. So mostly inherited land. I have 310 acres in uh, Bourbon and Lynn County, and then that 80 acres from my husband's uh, mother in Cherokee County. And then we have our little home place here in Crawford County. So we're kind of spread out a little bit. The furthest distance is 50 miles. The closer distance is about 10 miles. Southeast Kansas was where we're from. Right now uh, on our farm, we basically are running cattle. Um, my brother and I uh, do this together because he lives right next door to the main farm. And so he's highly accessible for everything. Um, and then we have uh, part of the acreage I rent out to um, others who farm it for beans or corn or whatever. Yeah. I'm not an active tractor driver now, <laughs> except, to, <laughs> except to bush hogs. So. <laughs> Well, I have, I have a lot of sentimental attachment to the farm just because it's been in my family for generations. But I also just love the land for what it is. I, I love being outdoors. I love seeing things growing. I love the animals. So it's just, it's a place that's close to my heart. I don't think I have a favorite place. I just like walking around being being on the farm and seeing everything as, as the seasons change and as the animals grow. And it's just a, a happy place for me. The whole place is. Well, in the process of transfer right now, we are still working with an attorney and I had no idea this would take so long for what I thought was pretty simple stuff. Um, we met with the attorney right after I got the grant to assist with the transfer. Uh, I had my daughter with me. That's part of my process of helping her understand what's going on. And um, he still doesn't have the paperwork done and it's been several months. And so I contacted him this week to say, where are we? And he said, oh, I've just been busy. I'll get you a draft this week. So we're just, we're in limbo right now. Um, I wanted to get all of the deeds straightened out because I think I told you that my husband passed away and my mother-in-law passed away all within the last year. And so everything needs to be reassigned and correctly assigned so that my daughter won't have problems later. I think the needs that we're trying to meet are her understanding about the, the realistic legal things like the yearly taxes and how do you file those and what deductions can you take and what things should you be looking at for maintenance and strength in the farm so that you can meet the legal needs there uh, at that part of management. And then also need to get her connected with other people in the community where the farms that are at a distance, they will help her that she can hire or that she can uh, partner with in order to keep things going. It's still in process because I was raised on a farm and my husband was raised on a farm. And so we were 
involved in all the uh, intricacies, the day-to-day -day things. And her experience has not been that direct. And so she is learning what she needs to know to keep the operation going. She also loves the land. She loves being outdoors, but she didn't have all of the experiences that he and I had. I'm thinking of example, when I was a child, I would drive the tractor. My dad would start me out on one end of the field and I would drive and then he would get it around the corner and I'd drive back. And, you know, like all farm kids, you learn to drive about the time you were 10 years old. <laughs> She didn't do that. <laughs> well, the support network that we have right now, I had her help me uh, pick the estate attorney so that she would be comfortable with him. Um, right now, my big support network is my brother, but he's older than I am. So he's not going to be the long-term network for her. Um, we have a nephew who is farming some of the land and he will be a key support network because he is a farmer full time. And so he understands a lot of the ins and outs. And so we will have her really connect with him. Um, we have not connected with, I have not connected with him before this past year related to farm issues because that land belonged to my mother-in-law that he farms. And so now we are getting, he is part of my team and he will be part of her team. So that at least will be stable. My daughter is a professional person as is her husband. And so we talked about attorneys that we all knew in town and knew what, knew what their specialties were. And they were the ones, like I said, that picked this particular attorney because he does quite a bit of estate work. And um, he's a very easy person to speak with. And he was he seemed trustworthy to all of us. And so that's where we went. And I wanted somebody that when I'm not available or not capable that she knows she can go to and he will understand the process of, of everything. Mm -hmm. I have tried really hard to keep the two, my son-in-law and daughter, involved in these decision makings because you're they're going to have to live with these decisions. <laughs> we have been working hard with the local community. Um, it's a very, very small community next to where these farms are. And it's like all the little towns, it's fading away. And so we've been working with them to um, try to build up the community by writing little grants and working on land banks in the city. I shouldn't have called it a city. There's only probably about 80 people in there, but you know, we're, we're trying to build up the community and they know that we care and we hope that they will care too, to see that we're all successful. Yeah. It is tied together. And my brother and I, I, of course you don't realize this until you're older. It was, we were in kind of an idyllic situation when we were growing up where the community was very supportive of each other. And anytime there was a need, everybody just jumped in and helped with that need. And so <clears throat> we're doing whatever we can right now to try to rebuild that in the community. So mm -hmm. it's been fun, but it's a challenge. <laughs> I think one of the big challenges that people have in transferring land can be the sentiment and the motion attached with the receiving person acknowledging to the giving person that they're going to die. That's a very emotional thing. And so I will ask her questions and she and my son-in-law try to avoid some of the answers because I know it's hard. I know it was hard for me when my mom was doing that. And I, I avoided the questions and said, you know, it's all going to be okay. Well, it's not okay if you don't have things fixed and organized. And so that's what I'm trying to do 
is organize this a smooth transition and also give her the knowledge she needs to keep to maintaining the, the farm. Because my brother who I work with in doing everything with the farm is two years older than me. So uh, it's gonna be a big responsibility for them. And so we're trying to educate them. It's a very hard conversation and we've been having it now actually for a couple of years um, to help help just process it through. Like I said, you got to get past that flat roadblock of acknowledging that your parent is going to die on you someday or maybe be disabled and not be able to give you the information at a later time because you know they want the information, but I'll, I'll get it later. Well, there's no time like the present. I'll give you an example of a difficult conversation that we still haven't resolved. And it's been going on for a year or two. So when I pass on, do they want to live in my house or are they going to keep their house? Oh my goodness, that's a terrible conversation for them because they don't want to make that decision. They don't want to think about that. But for me, as a person who's going to be passing something on, do I keep investing in the property, the housing that I'm at right now, or do I just maintain it? Or do they keep investing or do they just maintain? That's tough. It's been really tough. What I am determined to do is to insist that we talk about things that we don't want to talk about and not, not in a forced way, but you know, this is reality. The world is going to change. Our lives are going to change. So we might as well be prepared. So it'll be as easy as possible when that occurs. Uh, my husband and I did a lot of this work with each other, with her before he passed. And now we brought in his family and we're working with them to just have these open communications about what people want, what people think, and what's the right thing to do and get their opinions. And then you go with, with what you believe. Well, the only way you can build trust, in my view, is that you have to be completely honest. You have to also be vulnerable enough to let them know that you care about the decisions you're making and the decisions they're making and what the long-term impact would be. Um, it's tough, but you love them. And so you've got to overcome whatever communication barriers or barriers are in the way. I think asking open-ended questions like, what do you think about? Or how do you feel? And if this were to happen, what would you want to have? What would you want to, to be the outcome? And let it be their opportunity to talk as opposed to me saying, this is what I want for you. It makes it harder for them because they have to think about what they want and think about things they don't want to think about, but you just help them through. You know, life is life. <laughs>